My talk will be about non-glucometrous disk excavation. Can we miss non-glucometrous changes for being glaucoma? Three ophthalmologists experienced in assisting optic discs were asked to view fundus stereoscopic photographies of 27 eyes with non-glucometrous optic atrophy. 13 out of the 29 were misdiagnosed as showing glaucoma by at least one of the observers. In another source, up to 20% of patients be, may be misdiagnosed and treated for glaucoma due to misinterpretation of optic discoping. There are multiple non glaucomatous entities that may result in pathological optic disc excavation. We know we have a very long axon starting in the ganglion cells in the retina, ending in the lateral geniculate body. These axons form the optic disc, and when some of these axons disappear, cupping will be the case. So, we may have congenital optic disc anomalies that may mimic disc glaucomatous changes. In this case, tissues are not formed in the first place. An example is optic pit. You can notice here a huge cup. Another example where there is a huge inferior cupping and this case get a superior nasal visual field affection as well. A third example with cupping including the inferior part. So optic pit as you see here is due to loss of neural tissues in the circumscribed area of the optic disc together with defect in the lamina cribrosa. Half of patients with optic pits have some visual field defects, usually paracentral or arcuit, although the size pit of the pit and the location of the pit do not usually correlate with the visual field defect. Another example is tilted disc. Here we have a bilateral high myopia and the discs are tilted with peripapillary atrophy and you notice here in these areas that the neural tissue is not present and we get this enlargement of the cup. Tilted disc in most of the cases get associated field defects, usually being superior by temporal defect, not respecting the vertical meridia. Another example is coloboma of the disc. Again, another coloboma. In general, congenital disc anomalies, the start in the childhood, usually associated with CNS anomalies, inducing some abnormalities in the visual field that may mimic glaucoma. Yet, the characteristic thing is that the, do, the field changes do not progress. A second group is hereditary conditions like the autosomal dominant optic atrophy or Leib's hereditary optic neuropathy. In this example, you notice that we get enlargement of the cup here. This is the most frequently form of inherited optic neuropathy. Visual affection starts in the childhood period and again there is affection of the central field of vision which is not characteristic of glaucoma family history is positive <coughs> so we have a central or centrocecal field changes and the condition of cupping may increase over the time there will be a progression of cupping and atrophy of the neural realm with time Libre hereditary optic neuropathy <coughs> the onset is usually between 15 to 35 years. Sometimes they start very late in 65 years. But 
There is affection of the central vision. There is centrocecal or central field changes. A third group is the acquired causes of non scoping. Some insult will affect the neurons and the neurons will disappear resulting in cupping. <laughs> 